So it's Friday, we're just talking and just doing one of those are, uh, maybe call it chewing gum days. <laughs> <laughs> so we found a story online that was really interesting. Uh, a particular man said that, uh, said that his son should avoid dating a girl from a poor background. According to him, in his own dating experience, most of them don't believe in love. They just want to escape the unfortunate conditions, the conditions actually. More so, they are saviors. Um, they are the saviors their families are banking on to lift them out of poverty. So they don't appreciate little things. They believe you can do more. So in a nutshell, if you marry somebody that is some poor, from a very, very bad, poor background, that person doesn't truly really love you most times. Um, according to this man, it's possible that that person is just looking for somebody, a ticket out of poverty, and then the entire family is likely to be depending on you. So the man is therefore saying he would advise his own child to marry within his own level or even higher. Hmm. So these are interesting conversations because as, as um, silly as sometimes it comes across, they're deeper than that, you know, because these are real things people think about. When you see you're dating somebody, you ask, who is her father? Who is her mother? Where, do they, where are they from? Well, you know, they, want, they are assessing and engaging. Because the truth is that many men today, they say they don't want liabilities. Me, I don't mm -hmm. believe in that statement. You know, they, they are just many men, I think, are just... Just don't Maybe. want to lazy. <laughs> they want that easy road. Mm. Let me just find the girl that is that loves me and she's a high flyer. I'm good. What are your thoughts when you start? Let me start with this okay. Life is hard enough. <laughs> Let's not complicate things um, with your relationship. Marriage is very, very important. In many cases, marriage, marrying rights can, marrying rights can set you up for good, and marrying wrong can derail your destiny like totally. So I understand when people are careful when it comes to marriage. Someone posted very recently, I went for the 10-year wedding, um, wedding anniversary, and the reason he was really celebrating his wife at 10 was because he knew that his in-law didn't want their marriage. Mm. He, he said, he said, the man said no. Why? What are you doing? He said he's a digital marketer 10 years ago. That wasn't a career. There was no option. You looked <laughs> poor. You could not feed yourself. My, my daughter just graduated. I want my daughter to go into study, um, into, I think it was customs or immigration. The man had already prepared her career. her career path. And then you say she should get married and the next thing she will have children. No, don't do that. You don't look, I don't want you in my daughter's life. And I think every parent, when I first heard that story three years ago when I met him, I felt, uh, it's not, but now I have a few people that are in my, my staff that are dating. And when I looked at the men they were dating, my first option was, what are you doing, HR consultancy? Better go and get a job. Because I just want the marriage to be a complementary effort towards growth. And that's what this man is saying. When you go into a poor family, there is a lot of baggages burden. that they are coming with, burden that they are coming with. And sometimes it would becloud you from the relation, the enjoying the relationship as it is. You are having to pay school fees for our younger ones. You are having to take care of our parents' bills. You are responsible for them before you even get your own, find your own food. So it's a conversation worth having. And I don't think we even discuss it enough. We but what are carried away by we, love. Where do we put love? Where do we put love? I, I mean, there, we, we, love can only happen wait, when we now, connect. Wait, now. We, we, there, we used to have love stories. <laughs> you know, you fall in love with the houseboy. You fall eh? in love with the driver. You know, Bills you have... Bones. These are lovely Nigerian <laughs> realities where... I love him. I just love him. I don't care what he has, you know. Mm. I just want to follow, you know, that whole love story. What happened to that? Are we saying that now there's no more love? You have to now start mm. engaging and saying, okay, so what does he have? Where does he, where, where is she from? Who is her father? Who is her mother? What do you think about this? What are your thoughts on this? On a lighter note, for starters, a famous philosopher once said, mm -hmm. love is sweet. But when money enters, love is sweeter. Mm. However, I digress. <laughs> you know, this man, I, I'm not happy with this particular tweet, and I'm just, I mean, opposing what she said. I, so I remember one time when someone tried to introduce me to, my friend, a guy, tried to introduce me to another guy, and then still so send her picture, say, ah, I like her, nice. she looks okay, she looks okay. Is she rich? The girl, and then my friend yeah. replies, that's what, uh, my friend then replies, oh, yeah, she's comfortable. She said, no, no, I mean rich, rich. I'm like, <laughs> I just said, you know what, no, I'm not doing it. Even me, I was like, uh... it's a no-no for me, because you're already judging me yeah. based on what I have in my account. What are you doing? Now, this man is giving an absolute statement, and I think it's totally wrong because not everybody is like that. So the fact that you're from a quote-unquote poor background does not make you a liability. Mm. You might ah, be driven yourself. That. And I think that Hallelujah. it's unfair to actually put out such an absolute statement to say that anyone who's from a poor background is automatically a liability. It's very, very unfair. It, it taints the image of 
people who were unfortunate to be mm. born in a poor background. Mm. You know, so this that. one has put this one out now. This one I'm saying is true. When he then meets a good girl who is from a poor background, but he's, I mean, doing well for herself, yeah. trying to help. I mean, it's not her fault. It was exactly. just... I like, the I like that. that Let's stop into boxing that people into... Stop boxing people and just giving absolute statements to say... That. Yeah, yeah, but, but you know, that. we can talk about the fact that people, some people, their agenda is to marry up. Yeah. Some people, their agenda is, I want to marry my way out. I want to marry my way out of poverty. Some ladies prepare themselves, package themselves, looking for the cash cow that would help solve their family problem. Some parents tell the, their child, their daughter, that look around here. Don't pick any husband from this area. Mm. Don't pick any husband from this area. Go to where rich people stay. You still, you know, if you go marry a person for VI, you say go. And they deliberately package a lie so that they can appeal to such people. I think that it's extremely important that um, we address those people. It's not like, I, I, don't feel, I, don't, I don't feel like it's right to generalize that statement. Yeah. But it's a reality for some people. I have been in situations where a little girl, a little lady, she's still single. She's every money she's getting. Amaria knows this person. Every money she's getting, she's buying laptop for her younger sister. She's, bu she's buying phone for her younger brother. She's sending money to pay for school fees. And I'm wondering, girl, you just got a job. You have not even, you've not even gathered anything. But you are responsible for everybody in your lineage. And that is a burden to some men. It's scary. And we need to acknowledge it. I, a few guys have spoken to, they are scared of getting married because they feel like, the way girls are nowadays, everything, the entire life is your responsibility. And I also want to look good. I want to enjoy myself. And we must acknowledge them. So marriage is not a way out of poverty. Marriage is a way for, is a, is a means of com, um, companionship. But for some people, it's a way out of poverty. And that, this man is protecting uh, okay. his, his son, son. Okay. from being <clears throat> as a ticket to wealth. We're having uh, a conversation on this, marrying rich or not. And I think the question is, what is wrong in marrying rich? Marrying somebody from a poor family? and say, you know what, I don't want this level anymore. I want to find somebody who can take me higher, who can help me, expose me to new things. And I want, I, yes, I, I, will, I will therefore take the responsibility myself yeah, for my it. family. <laughs> but once we castigate somebody who is intentionally saying, you know what, I'm looking for a rich guy. Get it. I'm not, even, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm owning this space. I am looking for somebody who can pay my bills. What's wrong in that? For me, I think it's okay to aspire. I mean, aspire for the next level, if that's what you want. So again, like what she was saying, what, um, it's, it's, it's okay for you to dream big. And if that's the line you want to tow, please tow it with your full chest and by all means. You know, but then she was also talking about how, you know, especially for females, you bear the burden of your family if you're mm -hmm. from a quote-unquote poor, poor background. I, I know someone who, as soon as she gets her salary, she's sharing you take this, you take this, my mom this, my dad this, my, my younger sister this, my younger brother this. Like, there's just so much you can barely save. And so, obviously, a man who comes into that girl's life is already like, oh, my God, like, this is so much responsibility on me. Where do I even start from? Because mm -hmm. then he takes her up, takes up her... Because then, again, the family then expects her, him to... Obviously, ah, you're now marrying our daughter. Yeah, our, <laughs> yeah, our ticket. But, again, I think it's also important to look at the kind of family background that the person comes from. There's some families that do not like it. Like, you know what? It's okay. Face your husband. We will take care of ourselves. So look at what, they, what their standards are, what their morals, mm. what the ethics in their family is. Like, are they yeah. people that are just lazy and dependent on people? Like, you know what? Mm. Since you are here now, you're going to take care of the entire family. Some people are like, right. no, it's okay. We're not financially bare, but we'll, we'll look after ourselves. We're, we'll work hard. Let me take this call from Rachel. Rachel, are you there? Oh, we lost that caller. So, well, yeah, yeah, some comments. Yeah, so, I, I'm of the... <coughs> I'm, my own school of thought is you should aspire for a better life. Every human being should aspire. At least live the world better than you met it, but don't put that responsibility on someone else. So, I'm not going to... I'm not planning... I don't think anybody should plan to marry into wealth. I think everybody should plan to be wealthy. So if you're born into a poor family, I want to be wealthy. I want to make money. I want to end poverty in my lineage. I want to do this. But not that I want to marry a wealthy person. That should be out of the equation. If you level up yourself, if you level up your standard, mm -hmm. you might have come from a poor home. But by the time you're meeting a rich man, you're no longer a, the girl from a poor home. Mm. You are an equally... Um, responsible, strong woman who has built herself. And that should be the right narrative. Of course, I don't agree with what this man said because we must not forget, the narrative went and it, maybe people were, people like tweeting on all these things. Ah, no, uh, it's true. Me too. I dated one girl. That was how, no, it's not really, it's not, it shouldn't, it should, that shouldn't be. But the, let's look at it from the narrative of the family of the rich people. So we are now, we, we have some, 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 some kind of um, we're, wealth. We're rich. We're rich, we have some money, mm -hmm. right? And our son, 
is now falling in love with a girl who maybe not so much. Mm. You as a mother, you are questioning her real intentions. Mm. Mm. But she truly loved this boy for who he is. Because mm. you as a mother also, you, are seeing, you, you can almost you can see, see past mm. everything. So she's coming, oh, mommy. <laughs> and like, oh my goodness, this girl is not you. But it's difficult for you to, to make a son understand that this girl is in for your resources, not so much for you. So that's, what, that's the difficulty this parent is saying, that it's difficult for my son to really know if this person truly loves him because it is clear. But if, you, if, if, I, if I see him with somebody at his own level, I know that okay, she's probably there for, 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 real, for the real and reasons. That happens with but, wealthy people. Um, when, when people become rich, they are unable to know if their friends truly are their friends yes. or they are friends I'll link for the that connection. Up. Yes, let me pause you for a second. Rachel has been holding. Good morning, Rachel, are you there? Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, so keep, sorry. Keep, keep having that connected. So that's the point of friendship. Mm. Because, and I can link that to the other story of people say they rather trust the friends they grew up with, who mm. knew them before they became a celebrity mm -hmm. or something, than the friends they meet. They because meet. they feel like everybody's trying to get one Use from the other. Them. Use them. I think. Bridge. Yeah. <laughs> Do but that. again, you know, it's, uh, it's such a hard thing to be born into a poor family because you now people can't even trust your intentions. Mm. <laughs> like, what if I genuinely love this man and mm. I was just unfortunate to I be like born? I the problem of I'm so rich, I don't know who to trust, <laughs> that I'm so poor, no people will trust me. <laughs> Let everybody just walk their way out of you know, it. it that, that's, it, that's the reality. But it is really, I like what you just said, is a tough place to be in where you genuinely care and somebody is questioning your intention because they feel that you might be out for what you want. And that is really, really bad. I, my, one of my husband's friends, I, I don't know if he's married now, but I know like three years ago, 2019, we were talking to him and like, this is a big boy. This guy is really, really rich. He's in computer village. Very, very boxed up. Very handsome looking guy. Oh, guy, why you never marry? I don't see. I don't know. The babes I see is just they're after my money. So he has become so rich, he can't know which girl to see. is. And then he has this intention of this, if I'm, if I'm dating this girl, I want to test her by not giving her money. And then the girls run away. Then the ones he gives money to, he feels they're just after his money. So it's, there's a real confusion in knowing who your friend, who your true friends are, and who really loves you when you have money. They yeah. say, oh, wait, oh, la, ray, em, bane, la, wong, bane, lo, we, je. Like, people, they, they, eat, they want to eat with you, but they don't want to cry with you. Mm. And Let me take this call from Babs. Good morning, Babs. Are you there? Good morning, I'm... You're live. Go ahead, please. Oh, okay. Uh, I think, from my own perspective, I can say this man is really worried about what he's already settled. What do I mean by that? Personally, at this age, you hardly see a rich, a rich man, son or daughter, marrying from poor family. They won't even meet. Somebody schooling in UK cannot give somebody in uh, in one local school at like UK. So if those gap has already been set to. He's only been worried for what has been set to. Somebody schooling in uh, one uh, private investing in Nigeria will not meet somebody in one public school. So they hardly meet. So he's only been worried for what has been said to. That's my own Thank opinion. Thank you very much, Pabst. I don't want to discount it as a place of love because a, a boy that went to Covenant University, for example, can meet a girl anywhere who didn't go to any, university. To any very university and she's helped maybe helping her daughter, uh, helping her mother to hawk and you see her, she's really kind to you and you just have a conversation. You realize, oh, she actually went to school. She can put sentences together and you guys, and you find her funny, she's witty and you begin to have a com 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 yeah, um, relationship. Yeah, romantic and many movies. Romantic, 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 romantic movies. So the point, the point is, <laughs> where, where does that, so I want us to, because I don't want us to talk from the perspective of the poor family. Mm. I want us to look at it from the perspective of the family who they feel that, they, who, they, who feels they are wealthy. How can they trust? Because that's the concern of this parent. Mm. How do I trust? How do I know? What do I do to know that this boy that this girl brought home is in here for real because it's happening a lot for rich kids, rich girls. A lot of men come to them because ah, your father yeah. is senator, your father yeah. is this. They can oh, that's me up. that's standard. young mm. girls are finding it difficult to marry. I know a few um, young ladies. They were, I think they were my, my, my own generation. They are they are unmarried because they're so it's so difficult to find somebody who they know that is there for the real reasons. Mm. Their fathers are rich, they are, they are well connected, and every man that comes their way is looking for connection. Mm. So my mom can your dad, my mom can Yeah, they, they want to see connection. Mm -hmm, of course. So a girl is in that situation right now, how do I filter through all this and know the real one for me? Mm. Mm. That's the conversation. I like to open our phone lines. Please call us on 81 <laughs> 270536870913907694. Tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your view TVC so we can read your tweets. Let me take this call. Good morning, are you there? Essie calling from Dubai. Morning. Good morning. 
Yeah, actually, what I want to contribute is that I want you to talk about most of the parents. They are the cause of the issue most of the girls having now. <coughs> because some parents will definitely tell their daughters that just like they are investing in their first daughter, maybe their first daughter or second daughter. So if the one is going to take the responsibility of those youngest ones, which is very bad intention. So that is where people having the responsibility of taking care of the youngest one. So I have to pay the feet of my younger sister. I have to pay the feet of my younger brother. So most parents deliberately want to give that responsibility to their first child. That is where the problem starts. So nobody should be responsible for whoever, either your younger brothers or your younger sisters. So the people who brought them to this world, they should be the ones to be responsible for their needs, not their brothers or their sisters. So if your brother, if their first daughter or your, their first son, if you eventually have the consideration to do that, it should be something willing, not something should be the responsibility of that child, either the first one or the second son or the third mm. daughter. So Thank you, Esti. That's another perspective. Responsibility. So I think, I mean, what I like, where I would like Question. us to drive this conversation to is talking to parents of these rich families. Yeah. Maybe if you feel that this this girl or this boy is in it for the money, so be it. If she's marrying my son, my son for money, but if, if why she, is that a problem for you? Really love. Okay, so no, I well, I think that it's a problem because um, the, when hard times come and there will be there would always be hard times in marriages. You the, to stand the test of that period is when you genuinely. The intentions were true from the beginning. So, but you mentioned a, a lady, and I, I've seen someone have that conversation that I want to marry, I don't want to marry someone that'll tell me first class is too expensive. Let's fly economy. I don't want someone that'll tell me um, because I cannot afford first class, you should fly economy with me. And these are genuine conversations. Mm. A lady that has all her life flown first class, business class, is now getting married, and because the guy cannot afford it, you are having to tell me to stand yeah. down and bend yeah. and all of that. Can't you bend? So she's like, I, I love me, you bend. I don't want all, I don't want that kind of you life. So she's it. waiting for the man that can match up match up with her <laughs> lifestyle so that there will not be quarrel over money in the marriage. And I think sometimes it's important because we're coming if you're coming from two different worlds yeah. so far apart, every little thing that you cannot connect. Your ideology you don't see the same thing. I'm packing meats into my own food. You are looking at it and saying, ah, I only ah, eat money in my house. You say, like, gluten because, but it's not a big deal for me. When I grew up, mm -hmm. we used to not have meats all over. So every little thing will cause problems because you right. think differently. You're from different parts of the world, even if you live in the same country. If she even but says the something, parents you'll be can, pride. You'll but the parents can pride. put some things in place. That is why rich families in developed countries sign prenup. We don't do it here, but we need to start doing it. Prenup means that you don't get anything from me regarding property if you, if you divorce me. You, my parents' wealth goes to my children, not to you. You are not even the custodian of anything. No, like, all the laws will protect it. Yes, I love you, but my parents have said we must sign this contract. Yeah. So the parents will feel comfort knowing that at least I have protected our yeah, family our wealth yeah. from an Let me take this call from uh, Victor. Good morning, Victor. Are you there? Yeah, good morning. You're live. Go ahead, please. All right. So, um, yeah, I'm going to pile on on what the last um, caller has just said because it's um, really a true life story of mine. So, um, first of all, it comes from the moral upbringing. Now, to be poor is not a crime, mm -hmm. but how you bring up your your children, especially the female ones, it, it's more key. So, yeah, so I had this ex that I was um, got married to the same day to go. And at the point, I had an issue in my business and um, probably a couple of accidents. So I need to start up another business. And then um, it was during the COVID era and all and all. So um, when I met her, she carried responsibility. Taking care, sending home. I mean, when her take home was not even enough. You know, so I, as he said, I did one or two things and there about. But maybe I had an issue and I had to switch, switch to another business entirely and the whole thing wasn't forthcoming as it was. I started having an issue. Presently, as we speak, she's no longer with me and we have a four-year-old daughter. And... Mm -hmm. it
It's so difficult to hear. The audio is really bad. Was but I think he, he addressed moral upbringing, right? Mm -hmm. I think parents need to do better in raising, especially female children. Some parents just keep telling their mothers, especially, well, just let's just say parent, you know, keep saying, you know what? We don't worry, when you get married, the man will take care of you, he'll do this mm. one. And you're already prepping her mind right. to not be as aspirational as she mm. should be, even if she was going to be aspirational anyways. I have an aunt who, I mean, grew up in a rich home, flying this kind of, she started traveling maybe when she was two. I mean, she's been very rich. She married, she met this guy, they're married now. The guy is now, when is he thinking he's rich? But he wasn't at, that, wasn't at that level when they met. But he's also, he dreams. He was this person. At some point, she even had to work two jobs to cater for them. Mm. But now, she can conveniently sleep. Mm. I mean, she, she's still very hardworking. Yeah. But she can conveniently sleep. Yeah. But it wasn't so. Now, um, I think a previous scholar had mentioned something about they never meet. They meet. But this is, again, I'm, I'm just linking it to another thing. This is why some females pretend. You go and take your... You can't be claiming other people's parents because you, you're trying to meet up to a certain standard of the mm. rich guy, right? So you are not really um, showing your true color because mm. maybe you genuinely love this man, yeah. but his family will not accept yeah, you because you. they are ready. So you're just trying to say, oh, you, you now say this is, my, this is my uncle's house, even though it's not your uncle's house. You'll be claiming Lie. uncles that are maybe family deceitful. friends, just trying yeah. to, you know, because you, maybe you love, so, but the family won't see through it. They're like, hmm, you probably want my, uh, my son's money because we're rich and that. And so you're just already at a disadvantage, first of all, right. because you came from a poor background. So Let me take this call from Razak. Razak, are you there? Hello, Hello Razak, you're live. Go ahead, please. Yeah, I wanted to say this uh, entitlement given to a son is a good thing. It's a good thing to give to a son. Hello? Entitlement. Go ahead. Mm. You yeah. can hear you. Go ahead. I was... The, time, uh, the, entire, the sense of entitlement is a, is a very good thing for a son and poor uh, background condition. They train up a child when he grows, and when he grows, he will not okay. depart from it. Okay, right. It's a good advice. It feels like it would avoid entitlement. Okay. All right, thank you very much. So I, I, I remember a story. There was a guy that broke up with me many years ago, and um, one of the reasons why he broke up with me was because he felt that I just had too many issues. I was, I was constantly, I was almost like a burden, you know. Um, then I wanted to buy a car. I had, um, I had some money. I, had, I, think, I think I had about, I had about 80 or 90% of the money. And I was out looking for the balance or 10%, which he'd give me. And then I will complain that I don't have money for this. I don't, you know, I was constantly lamenting on issues. Then, and during that period of my life, I was jobless. Um, I, I think I lost my job. I didn't have things were difficult at home. My mom was there, but my dad was very sick. Every resource was doing was towards his was towards his sickness, and things were really really down and out. So the person I was dating at that moment in my life felt I was almost like a burden because every single time he felt that ah, eh, Mariah is complaining. I'm, I'm constantly giving him stories of mm -hmm. troubles, challenges, and it's our conversation running. was never <laughs> positive. Mm. So. You got there, was it, Auntie? Uh, it was nice knowing you. I'm not a <laughs> No, because, you know, he broke it off. But it was when I was able to get out of that situation. And I started thinking that if I was a guy too, I would leave. You leave. Because all you are giving me is problem. Mm. I'm already thinking in my mind that, okay, I guess I'll be paying somebody's bills. I'll be paying mm -hmm. hospital bills. I'll be mm -hmm. doing this. I'll be doing that for this person once I become a girl coming to their family. So sometimes also we need to talk to ourselves. Yeah. You know, let us be who we are. Yes, you might not be from a wealthy background. But let the person know you for you, you yourself. Don't try to create a facade of who you're mm. not. Let them know you for who. If they now choose not to, it's because that's their own person. But let us not bring in out the problems of my older brother, my sister, my this, my clinical education is this. That can I think, that makes I people think run away. Just hit the nail on the what might be the divide between wealth and poverty intermarrying. Wealth and poverty, someone from a poor background or someone from a rich background can marry if the person from a poor background isn't carrying that burden and placing it on the next person, but he's taking responsibility and bringing joy. Yes. It's just that sometimes when you, if, if, they, if the two get into the same relationship, it might be a case of one person feeling like, why are you always lamenting? Why are you always complaining? That might be the reason it might not be working. It might be a character issue and not a background issue. Because if, the background, if, you, if, you, if you meet someone and you're vibing positivity, you're vibing possibility, you're vibing growth, mm. even though you don't have money in your account, we've seen cases where people, that, that happens in the men. Men will go and meet a rich babe 
and tell the babe that I will take you around the world. I might not have anything mm -hmm. right now, but I'm going to fly you to the moon. I'm going to, we're going to eat breakfast in London and we'll eat <laughs> dinner in Dubai. And the girl would fall for that guy. What did he fall for? What's the, what's the girl falling for? He's falling mm -hmm. for the dream right. and the confidence. So sometimes the intermarriage doesn't work because the woman is coming like, come and just help my condition. And that character is dulling the spirit. Let me take this call from Tolu. Come on, Tolu, are you there? I'm there. You're live. Go ahead, please. Right. I have to call you on tomorrow. I'm 35 <laughs> years old now. I've been watching you since when I was. Oh, thank you. Like oh, wow. Even those days before, or oh, well, much was getting software, for the software set and cool, you know. Yes. So the thing is, and this thing you are talking about today, you are talking about me, basically, yeah? Look, uh, you are talking about um, from poor background and all that. I have a relationship with some people that broke up because of this same thing. The thing is, okay, I'm not talking for you, but... Like I have family, I have, I have people I have to look after, I have to take care of that, mm. I have to take care of them. So because I now have to meet you in our past, that, does that mean that, okay, because uh, you don't like this, you are not okay with it, I, because I want to date you, because you think I should not neglect my family because you don't like it? We just have to go. Some of us came from a family or, or, or a family setting where we just have to take care of people that we always had all of our life. Mm. There's nothing I can do about it. So, I, I just really don't... I'm just trying to say that this is the reality for us as some people. It's the reality. Talk, you, you are making the guest there and talk about an example of someone that if you, like, you guys have to when you pay salary, you have to pay, give this person money. This is the reality of some people. This is the reality of some people. This same old woman, at one time or the other, many years ago, they took care of all in the little they have. So there's no way I would, the girl doesn't have to go. Mm. She doesn't have to go if she's not okay with it. Because that is the reality. And it happens to a whole lot of people. A whole lot of people. So I Thank think you, Tolu. other partner just has to understand. If you cannot understand, then break up any the relationship. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Tolu. I think that's a very that interesting perspective. Let me take a few comments from Nima here. Nima says that dating, no, said the owner of the tweet is talking nonsense. Neither love or wealth is permanent, which is very true. Mm. A person you did, you, a person you did marry, a person you did marry, I think. Then he says, dating a girl from a poor or rich background is about how it affects his mindset. You can date any for any reason, mm -hmm. but marriage is another matter entirely. So mm. it's about mindset. I think we're going to wrap up on this, but I think in a nutshell, um, we, we, we must be true to ourselves. Mm. Um, the person who was rich today started from a poor background. Mm. Nobody so was born. Nobody wealthy. was born wealthy. Yes. That, I mean, I think I saw that it was in a movie I watched that nobody. And I think this is um, crazy rich Indians or something like that. No, nobody crazy rich Asians. Nobody was born wealthy. You know, somebody sacrificed or somebody took a chance on somebody. Somebody raised another family up. Somebody helped another family. Somebody married into mm. a poor family and helped the family up. Somebody did something. Mm -hmm. So if it's not happening today, I don't think it's such a big deal. Yeah. Mm. If you if you if in poor family and you feel that you're married to somebody who's wealthy and can help your family, I don't think there's anything wrong in that. But even as they do that, understand the sacrifices they're making. And I think both, one, there's mutual respect on both ends. It's fine. Somebody must lift somebody up at the end of the day. Exactly. That's it. And I think for females, we just need to do better. Getting a richer guy or a rich guy is not your ticket out of poverty. So not like I meet you now the next day, I'm already telling you my phone is bad, my hair is bad, my <laughs> this one is sick. I just chill. Like, yeah. Be, just do better for yourself then. You'll find love, I'm sure.